Okay, today I'm going to do an educational video here about golf shot simulators and launch monitors. You know, two you probably know of are TrackMan and FlightScope. So, you know, these devices, they simulate a golfer's shot. They capture it in frame positions. From there, they use a formula to cal or calculate and simulate the shot. So what you'll see on your end is if it's a down-the-line view, you're going to see the shot kind of take off in these directions, kind of curve off or whatever it's doing. And if it's a side view, you're going to see the, see the shot kind of displayed like this on screen. Okay, also, with the shot being displayed, it's also providing a lot of information. So it measures all sorts of data, you know, and this data can be very useful if it's used in the right way. It can also be detrimental if it's used in the wrong way. But what we're going to do is just cover the common data that it provides, uh, you know, what it means, and then how you can use it. So... The first thing we see here is you know, what I've done is made 18 categories that you'll usually come across when you're using these machines. So the first one here, we'll start with club speed, and we'll use Cella Choi as an example here uh, with V1 Pro just to kind of demonstrate it, to make it a little more easier to understand some things. So club speed, if you watch her throughout her swing, at the moment of impact, what it's going to be doing is measuring her club head, okay, in miles per hour. So on your end, what you're going to see, right, this may be something like this, it might say 100. Okay, so that's just going to display kind of how much or how many miles per hour the club is swinging. Okay, second here we see ball speed. So with 100 miles per hour, we might see something with a ball speed of, let's say, 150. So what ball speed is, it's measuring we use Chella Choi here again. When she's made contact with it, you'll see the ball take off the face, right? So there goes the ball. Now at this moment, the ball be, will be captured after impact, and that ball that ball is going to be measured its speed uh, in miles per hour, and that's how ball speed's calculated. So club head speed is the club head. Ball speed is the ball coming off the club head. The third category we see here is swing direction, okay? So on your end, after the shot's played, you might see something like, oh, let's see here, 2.0, right? Or it might say 2.0R. Might say negative 0.5 might say something like negative 3.0 L okay and what that stuff means here let's go ahead and just use again the example so swing direction okay so here's the line of flight so make a straight line up from her target line or that's her target line so again here's the line of flight okay swing direction when she's coming through impact right on the downswing it's going to be measuring whether she's swinging down the target line, off to the right, or off to the left, and by how many degrees, okay? So here, that's where that number will be displayed, and that's what that's telling the golfer. Now, club path is very similar to swing direction, right? Except swing direction is measured more over a lot more viewpoints, and club path is measured more just at the moment of impact. So when we look at it, right, so club path is basically going to be measured right here, okay, where it's swinging at that moment. Swing direction is going to be measured kind of from here, okay, and then as she swings through, kind of through there, that, those directions. Okay, that's kind of the difference there between those two. All right, now swing plane. Okay, that's our fifth category here. Now what that means is, go ahead and pull her up here. So we'll focus on the picture here on the left. So swing plane, she's going to start with a certain number. Okay, that's 41. And what I'm doing is just drawing a line extending through the butt end from the hosel all the way through the shaft there. So that's 41 degrees, right? So at the moment of impact, 
We'll measure her again. See, now we're more at like 44. Okay, so you might see something on your end here. So something like this. Well, for her, it would be 44. Right, 44.0. Okay. A smash factor. All right. What that is telling you is it's calculating uh, club speed and ball speed. For instance, how fast the ball is coming off the club, right? So if a player had a club speed of 100, right, and they had a ball speed of, let's say, 150, like we had earlier, the smash factor would be 1.50. Okay, and what this is what this is measuring is basically how efficient the hit was, how centered it was, and was it hit on the correct angles and with what type of speed. So, in my opinion, you know, smash factor is a very important number, and that's something you do want to be focusing on and making sure you're doing well in that category because it's basically how well you're hitting it. Uh, okay. So to display that on camera, that would be basically at the moment of impact right here. You know, where is the ball making contact on the face, right? And is she doing it properly? Is she doing it from the correct angles? And what type of speed does it have on it? Basically, how efficient the hit is uh, and how centered it is. Okay, face angle, all right? So with face angle, you might see something like, uh, I might say something like 1.0, right? You might say something like negative... 2.1 L okay what that means we'll use her as an example here okay so at, at impact right again this was her target line right so it's a 90 degree line going straight up so a perpendicular line to that would be here zero degrees right that's what they're measuring based off where she her alignment is so her face angle right now is being measured from here, zero, right? So if it's open, it would be in these directions, okay? Positive. So if the face is open or right, this being zero, if it was eight, that would be eight right or eight, right? Which is pointed off in this direction, eight degrees. Now, closed or negative is the opposite of that. Again, this being square, right, or down the target line, okay? Closed is a face that's pointed in these directions, right? So, this would be a face that's closed four degrees, okay? And if you drew a line off of it, it's going to point off in this direction four degrees. So, that'll be displayed either by negative uh, or with an L when it's going in those directions. Okay, face to path relationship, all right, this can get confusing, but it's not. So remember, they have a path number, right? So let's say the path is two right, right, or two. So we know this is two, okay? And let's say her face is one. No, it's not square. Let's just say it's one degree open. Okay. Actually, let's make it, let's say her face is four. Okay. So it's a little bit easier to understand. So her face is pointed off in this direction. She's swinging two degrees right. Her face is four degrees right. Okay. So what you'll see here. So if her face angle... Okay, so if her face angle is 2.0, right, and her swing direction is 2.0 to the right, or I'm sorry, her face angle was 4.0. Okay, if her face angle is 4.2, okay. Let's say her swing direction is 2.0, right? Which would also be 2.0 or 2 to the right. Okay? 
which means her face angle is 4.2 or 4.2 right, right, open. So face to path at this moment is going to equal 2.2 or 2.2 right, okay? All right, let's use a different example. Perfectly straight flying shot would look like this. It would be a target line of here, right? So a swing path of zero and a face angle of zero. Okay? That ball in theory should fly straight if everything else is done correctly. Now, let's say that the face, let's say she's swinging 10 degrees right. Okay? And her face is 10 degrees open. The face to path relationship is zero at this moment. For instance, this ball should fly on a straight line 10 degrees right of her target. In order for it to curve back, right, if she's swinging 10 degrees right, right, so right now it's 10, is the number, right? So in order for it to curve back left of this line, right, and not go straight on that line, her face has to be less than 10, okay? So her face could be 9 degrees open. Let's find these numbers. Right? It could be 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. All of those numbers would still draw the ball. It would still produce draw curve, right? And then if her face was closed, it's just going to produce even more draw curve. So if her face was, was 0, so if it's square... Her face to path relationship at this moment is going to be negative uh, 10, right? Okay, now if her face is, let's say, 10 degrees closed, her face to path relationship is going to be negative 20. But all of now, in order for the ball to go right of this line, right? Let's say she's swinging 10 degrees right. Again, in order for it to go right of that line, Again, 10 degrees open would send a directly straight shot on that 10 degrees right swing path. In order for the ball to curve right, the face needs to be open more than that, so it would have to be higher than 10. 11 or more. In order for it to draw, it has to be 9 or less. It's not really a 9, but you get it. Okay, sorry that was confusing, but I hope you understand. It's not as difficult as it sounds to understand. Uh, it is somewhat, somewhat confusing when you're first trying to look at all those numbers. Right? Spin loft. Okay? What that is doing is measuring her relationship of basically dynamic loft and the loft of the club. So what, what I mean by that is if you look at her shaft angle right now, it's kind of sitting at 88. Uh, which means it's really forward pressed a little. But let's say this club was 10 degrees of loft, the driver. So there's 80. That makes it 10 degrees of loft, right? Now when she gets to impact, that's going to kind of be another type of loft, which is her dynamic loft. Now, I don't have her right at impact. I have her right after. So let's pretend like that is. Now at this moment, you're going to see things are a little different. Now the club's kind of leaned back. Possibly there's more loft on it, right? There's a possibility that there's loft added there. Let's say that that was impact. Now, what that is measuring, if her driver was starting with 10 degrees of loft, okay, and let's say when she got here, right, let's say her dynamic loft was uh, 14, okay. So what that is going to mean is her spin loft would be four okay so if the loft of her driver is 10 degrees dynamic loft is 14 uh, her spin loft would be four the loft of her driver or whatever club you're using um, let's say the loft of her pitching wedge is 48 right and it's coming off at 44 degrees then it would be negative four Spin axis, okay, what this is is basically how the golf ball is spinning and what axis it is spinning on. So you're going to see numbers displayed like, uh, you might see 1.1, which will mean fade spin. 
Okay, you might see 1.1L would be draw spin, or I'm sorry, that would actually read negative 1.1L, right? Okay. Now what that means is this. So here's a golf ball, okay? It can spin on an axis um, around its equator here. It also can spin somewhat on axis around its poles, right? Now, if it has draw spin, it's going to be drawing, or here's the ball. Now, spin axis, right? Draw spin, it's going to be spinning on this axis. Okay. And that's going to be represented by negative or left. Fade spin, it's going to be spinning on this axis to some degree. Okay. Now, also keep in mind the ball is also going to be having a backspin axis, right? But what this is measuring here, as far as spin axis, is how much draw and fade spin it has, okay? Now, launch angle, which you'll see is something like this. So, what we'll do here, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Okay. So launch angle, you might see 10.5 for a driver, and you might see 12.3. Okay. And what that means? It's pretty simple. Now the window the ball's launching in. So when it's struck here, you can tell off her face if you just drew a line. So right now that would be 16 or so, right? This being zero. Again, I'm after impact, but just for measuring purposes, that's kind of the launch angle. What angle the ball's launching at? Again, this being zero, flat to the ground, 90 being a direct upward line, okay? Okay, next is launch direction. So what you're going to see here, this is kind of similar to and that's similar to swing direction, but what, how the ball is launching as far as horizontally, right? So as far as numbers you might see, you might see 4.4 um, right to 4.4, right? The negative 0.2, the negative 0.2 L. Okay, and what these numbers represent, I'll pull up Cella again. So launch direction is measured from the line of, or the target line here, the line of flight. So when her golf ball initially takes off this target line after impact, it's going to be measured as far as how far left or how far right it is and that in those directions. And that's launch direction. Okay, attack angle here at the bottom. What that is, is as far as how the club is either descending or ascending uh, into the ball. Whether it's hitting down, hitting up, or hitting even with the ball at the moment of impact. So for attack angle, you might see things like, uh, again, it'll be measured with numbers like 1.1, negative 3.4, okay? It won't use right and left. Now, so let's take a look kind of what attack angle means. So think of it like this. See, she's holding lag, right? Okay, all the way into the shot here. Now, at some point in time, the club's going to kind of bottom out, and we're going to use the ball kind of as the level or the even point here, kind of her, as her club's kind of swinging through here. Now, what it's measuring is what angle at impact it's hitting, okay? Descending or negative would be all angles still downward, still on this downward hit into the ball, and then ascending and upward would be angles like this into the ball, right? So here you can still see where her hands are in front of the club head, and the club is still 
actually looks like she's leveling out pretty even there. So she would be pretty close to zero as far as her attack angle. So the more negative the number, the sharper the angle into the ball, okay? The more positive the number, the flatter or the more up would swing into the golf ball. Okay, the next category is spin rate. Um, what that's doing is measuring the golf ball's revolutions per minute, um, especially on its backspin axis. So what we're going to see here, it's not really anything to really display, but as the golf ball takes off, it's going to be spinning kind of again around on these axes, especially on the backspin axis. Okay. It's going to have a revolutions per minute, how many times it's going around, and that's just going to display a number. Why that's important is, you know, different clubs, in order for them to, to carry and fly properly, uh, they, need a, they need a spin rate that's in a certain, within certain parameters. So you kind of need to know what you're looking for with what club, with what club you're hitting. Dynamic loft. Uh, what that is basically is loft at impact, not your starting loft. So again, we used the example before of a driver might have a starting loft of 10.5, but at the moment of impact, it might, it might be 12, right? Or if the guy's hooding, or if the person is hooding the club, uh, it could be lower than 10.5. They might have a dynamic loft of 7.5. Let's say they're leaning way out in front of it, or whatever the case may be, but it's just measuring the loft in relationship to its true loft at the moment of impact. So again, she'll start with a certain loft on her club, okay, and then dynamic loft is what loft it is when she strikes. Okay, so at that moment at impact, whatever loft it is there, that's how dynamic loft is measured. Okay, landing angle. Uh, this is the measurement of the degrees of its descent. So with landing angle, you might see something like, uh, let's see, 40 maybe, right? So what that kind of means is, just, uh, so she hits her shot here. As it's flying, we're just going to kind of simulate. So let's say it takes off here, kind of flattens out, and as it's descending, right this angle right here is going to be measured in its descent and that's its landing angle side so side is the measurement of where the ball ends up in relationship to the player's target so it's going to be measured in right or left so it could read something like let's see here. it was 11 yards uh, right or 12 yards right of the target it would read something like that let's say that it was negative seven yards left of the target it would read something like this or negative seven and a half yards left of the target it would read like that and what that is is just telling you where the shot ends up so what that would look like here for display purposes just real quick is side let's say her target is here okay and then wherever her golf ball ends up, so she strikes the shot, let's say it ends up 10 yards left of the target, then that would read 10 left, right? And if she hit it directly at the target, that should read zero. All right, and then on to the last category here, which is carry, and that's just real simple. That's just the carry distance of the shot. So it might read something for a driver so if you really bombed one, it might say 280, right? And all that is doing is measuring. Let's put it up real brief here. So, boom, she hits her drive, right? And then off it goes. So here, well, let's make a fairway real quick. So here's the fairway, okay? So here goes her drive. And carry is where it lands, this point, not where it bounces and rolls. So this measurement right here would be carry, not where it ends up. Okay. All right, that's a lot of categories and a lot of information. But like I was mentioning or mentioning before, um, you know, this all this data can be really useful if it's used in the correct manner, in the correct way. 
So, right, hopefully this was helpful and hopefully going over these things can help you, you know, next time you get a chance to get on uh, one of these devices, uh, make better use of it, crunch those numbers and really build a good golf swing. All right, guys, thank you.